George writes in. He says, Tom, a few of my buddies think I've got a problem. Problem is that I only, and I'm underlining only, I only do married women. Right now, I am seeing three married women. Their ages are 32, 37, and 54. All of them are beautiful, and the sex is great. Since my divorce seven years ago, I've been with at least 20 married women. Quite a few of these women still occasionally call me for my services. Very few single women. Why do I do this? Well, I think it has something to do with your 101 teachings. How to get laid with the least amount of money. Here are a few of my points to consider. One, it's cheap. Because our meetings are discreet, I don't have to take them out to shows, dinner, etc. I take them to hotels or do them at their home or the ones I feel really comfortable with, I... Have them come over to my place. No presents at Christmas, Valentine's Day, birthdays, etc. Two, it's fast. It's usually a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. As soon as I'm done, it's see you later. Rarely do I spend the night with them. I do these women at all times of the day if they're available. I can usually get away from my work for them. Three, no commitment. Most single women want you to fall in love with them after you've done them a few times and want to they want you exclusively for themselves. They want a relationship and marriage. Not happening. Four, it's unpredictable. I never know when my services are needed and by who. They call me. If they're calling long distance, they hang up before my voicemail answers. This keeps my number off their phone bill. I call them back if I'm available. Five, safer sex. I'm sure most of the married women I've been with only have sex with me and their husbands. What do you think they have sex with when uh, they ring your phone once and you don't call back? I, I, I think you're mistaken there. Some of these chicks, uh, they're spinning plates just like you are. Like these chicks who are addicted to uh, chat rooms. They're lining them up and knocking them down, baby. He says, from what I gather from many of these beauties, their husbands don't do a very good job of satisfying their sexual needs like I do. Six. And I like this one. Public service. Literally. He says, some people might think that I cause divorces. Not true. I think I have saved a number of marriages by my words and actions. See, these women would get divorced, but because they've got somebody who anonymously and discreetly bangs them. They, they, the guy's keeping marriages together. That's what he says. He's doing the public service. He says, these women know from the beginning that I'm not interested in any long-term relationship. All I want is sex and to satisfy their sexual desires. I know for a fact that I never caused a breakup. I just wanted to get your opinion. Should I stop doing this? I know you are a busy man, but a simple yes or no would help me out greatly. I'm a long-time listener, and your show helped me to get through my divorce. The divorce was my doing and not hers. She got fat and lazy, and that was it. It cost me a bit of money, but I'm so glad I did it. Love your show. Sincerely, George. Well, George, uh, should you stop doing this? Um, there is the morality question. And as I have told you on the air, um, I've been a very, very bad boy over the years. I am no one to be moralizing on the radio. 
you have people who lecture you on things like how to uh, how to keep a relationship with your parents while your own mother is rotting in a condominium somewhere for weeks until the smell causes the cops to be called. There are people who lecture on that kind of thing. But um, I am not one of them. I've been very, very bad. I have, um, I have had affairs while in relationships, married and unmarried. And I have been with other men's wives, girlfriends, eventually ex-girlfriends. The worst one I was ever involved in, ever, ever, involved a woman who, well, was not only crazy about me, she was crazy. And she proceeded to write me a string of emails that, well... They went into detail about her feelings in broken English, but you could understand what she was getting at. Letter after letter after letter. And uh, one day, this is true, one day she came home and uh, apparently her uh, her husband had one of those... Um, he either hacked into her email account or he had one of those uh, spy programs on the computer. And so she came home and um, he used thumbtacks. He printed out every email and he used thumbtacks and he tacked them up on every wall of the apartment where they were living. They were everywhere. They were all over the place. So when she walked in the door, the, the house was just blanketed with emails telling me how much she was crazy about me. That was good. So you understand, I, I can't, uh, George, I can't uh, be lecturing you on morality and whether this is right or wrong, because I've been bad. So uh, let, I, that, uh, let me get that out of the way right now. Now, from a pragmatic point of view, I do think that there is risk involved. And you have to be aware of the risk. What is the risk? That you'll get caught. That one of these women will do what that woman did with me. She not only liked banging me, she couldn't resist writing long missives. Telling the details. Now, in that case, I was lucky because the guy was a wimp. And he wouldn't stand up to me and he wouldn't say anything and he wouldn't do anything. And he had a little squeaky voice and... uh it was like nothing happened in there. Nothing. I, at one point, I called her house. He picked up, and uh, he took a message. Would you do that? Your wife is banging somebody else. And the guy she's banging calls and asks for it. He says, well, let me get your number. Don't worry. She has it. Okay, I'll tell her you call. That's a wimp. That is a complete, ballless wimp. And that, of course, is why I was able to step right in there and uh, put my hand in the cookie jar. Because he was a wimp and I wasn't. That's it. Done. But uh, you never know when the guy you're doing this to, you know, collects weapons, is vindictive. Sometimes women, and i, I got to tell you, again, I'm speaking from experience, okay? The kind of women who want to screw around, you ever wonder why they want to screw around? Sometimes it's because they're being abused at home by a dangerous man and that guy might just find your phone number on her cell phone bill or that guy just might come over there and roll up his sleeves and beat the crap out of you or come over with a gun or a knife or something set you up somehow you never know now granted it looks like you've used pretty good judgment so far but I'm telling you if you bang a chick a little too well or she has a little too much fun with you Never know when she's going to start, uh, I don't know, signing uh, her name with your last name or whatever, doing crazy things that chicks do. So you are taking a risk. You could even get killed. All of that. 
So uh, whether you should continue doing this or not, well, be aware of the risk. It's dangerous. Of course, the fact that it's dangerous is what makes it so hot. Let's be honest. Slipping away to a motel or a hotel or the back seat of a car or whatever while the husband is uh, out of town or not paying attention, it's hot. Because there's danger. You might get caught. He might react. You might get hurt. You haven't. But if it was completely safe, it wouldn't be as interesting. Are you doing a public service? That's a real question. I mean, you got to wonder how many... I, I've heard people say this one before. And I wouldn't mind talking to you about this. Um, I have heard uh, not only uh, callers on talk shows, but even like authors... Writers of magazine articles claim that an affair can be good for your marriage. Good for it. You know, you married the nice guy, Poindexter, whatever. He uh, is a good father. He's a good provider. He takes care of the kids. Yeah, but in the bedroom, he's just not going to ever get it done. But you want to keep the family together, and so the pool boy steps into the breach. And he keeps your marriage together. You buy that? Heard that many times. Anyway, the bottom line here, it's a guy who does only married women. Is that a good thing? Do you think he's doing everybody a favor? Do you think it's good for him? What do you think? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. It is finally great to pay homage to the king. Thank you. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Let's say hello to Becky on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Do you care, Becky? I do indeed. I'm doing great. Yes, I think for the topic today, I think that um, it's good for the man because obviously he doesn't want a commitment, so he's getting what he wants. And uh, I think that it's bad for the woman, though, because she's the one that took the vow to be faithful to one person. Well, we're not hearing from the woman. We're only hearing from the man who does the married women. And for him, um, the only problem is, you know, they say what goes around comes around. So. Um, well, I know they say that, but does it really? I think so. I think so. I think there's lots of people who do bad things and get away with them forever. That's also true. That's true. But I think that if he's having fun and, you know, it's not his responsibility. He's he's not the one that took the vows, and he's not the one that has to be married. So. So you think he's doing? Yeah, but is he doing? Like, here's the one thing that he said that I I I question. Uh, is he really doing these marriages a favor? Um, probably, especially not in the long run. Especially, I, I think that if they have children, that really comes down to it. Because a lot of the times, women can't be intimate without starting to have you know emotional ties with people and wanting therefore wanting more. So if they end up ending their marriage for this other person, even if the other person doesn't want them to, then it affects the family. Mm -hmm. So oh. then then it's definitely wrong. If he's involved with women that, I guess, keep it uh, separated, which I, I personally don't wouldn't be able to do that. But, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 this is the thing I wonder about. How many people do this and rationalize it by saying, it's how I keep my marriage together. It's improved my marriage. I mean, there are people who say this, and they say it because they say, if, you know, if I couldn't relieve the pressure somehow, if I didn't have somebody to have sex with, somebody would talk to me and pay attention to me, uh, I would have left and my kids would have been without a father. No, that's horrible. That's, I mean, why live your life like that? That's, to me, that's just living, that's living a lie. Uh, know, many, many of us live lies, don't we? Um... Personally, I don't. I don't see the purpose of living your life like that. You know, you only got one life, a short time. You know, you should... Well, I, I happen to agree with that, but I will also tell you that uh, there are people who stay together. For example, there are men who stay in marriages because they're afraid if they get divorced, their wife's going to take everything. 
Right. Well, my, my, my parents were like that. They stayed together for the wrong reasons. And let me tell you from, from experience, it's not the way to go. It doesn't do the kids any good. I happen to agree, especially if there's a lot of screaming, yelling, fighting, hitting. Exactly. Exactly. You, you, just, you put them through more emotional drama, keeping them in the midst of your bad marriage than letting them, you know, enjoy you. When you're, you're, if you're happy or divorced, then they'll enjoy you even more. Uh, I think you make some good points. And I thank you, Becky. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Barry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, Barry. Good. Well, I uh, I think he's definitely doing a service. Mm-hmm. Because, um, well, it happened to me. I was married, and uh, uh, there was one of these guys that got together with my wife, and um, she was going to probably do something like that anyway. The marriage wasn't that great. I found out about it and just got the hell out. So he's he doing a service in that it forced you to make a decision. Well, yeah, and I had already uh, pretty much decided I needed to get out. It, it just made it a lot easier for me. And in the cases that these people don't get caught, you know, the woman's having fun. She's unhappy at home. Now she's having some fun on the side. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I don't. I think he's doing a service, definitely. These, these women would be finding somebody else. How about the husband wouldn't think he's doing them a service? No, but, you know, I was one of those husbands, and uh, it did me a, ju- a service. It helped me get out. Yeah, but you, uh, that's you. There were some guys who would whip out a forty five and blow somebody's brains out over that. Yeah, that's true, but these, you know, these guys aren't keeping their wives happy, obviously. But, yeah, so George is definitely taking a risk. Yes. Um, but, you know, the question of him, is he doing a service? Uh, for these women, definitely. He is. is he taking a risk, definitely. Hmm. In my opinion. Yeah. Well, he thinks he has saved marriages. Oh well, I don't know about saving them. What he said, I think I have saved a number of marriages. Perhaps so. Uh, they're obviously not. So you believe you could save a marriage by banging some other guy's wife? I don't believe that part. I right, you don't. Uh, believe, you don't believe. No. I don't think he's saving them. Um, you yeah, know, well, maybe he's so good at doing it. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Maybe he's so good at doing it, she comes home with these new ideas and brings them home to her husband, and their sex life improves, and then they live happily ever after. Well, that could be. Oh, we could, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm the husband. I'm wondering, where are you getting all this information? I mean, uh, Dr. Phil didn't reach out of the TV set, did he? Where'd you get all this information from? Anyway, thanks a lot for the call, Barry. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about George, the guy who only, only, only amps married women. Shirley on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Shirley. Well, um, I'm calling in because I kind of do the same thing. Um, As a little girl, my mother had a lot of affairs with my father. She was the third wife. She was 20 years younger than him. Mm -hmm. And it made me hate her. So kind of as an adult, I'm kind of doing the same thing. Like, I only... You hated her, so now you're going to do the same thing. Well, no, like, I only date married men. Like, my goal isn't just because I like the, you know, the men. I mean... They're good and everything, but I like knowing that I'm getting his wife. Really? Uh huh. And it's like it's a real it's a real deep thing for me. And it, I've actually had men say, "I'll leave my wife for you," and I'll say, "Oh, that's great because I think I'm in love." But once they do, I, I I leave them. I can't I can't be with them unless I know that I'm taking them from somebody else. And you enjoy that. How many uh, married men do you do at any given time? Right now, I'm dating three older gentlemen. Uh-huh. And um, actually, that's why I'm out here in um, SoCal. Um, I'm originally from Georgia, and uh, I, one of my sugar daddies brought me out here to live with him. And when his wife goes back to New York, you know, I'll stay around the house or whatever, but most of the time, I just spend my time um, at the penthouse in Malibu. Wow, wow, wow. I like driving the women. I like driving the wives' cars. I like sleeping in their beds. I like going through their things. I like them knowing I've been there. Really? 
Yeah, it makes me feel like I'm in control. I finally have, like, taught my mom a lesson. I know it's weird, but that's how I feel. Now, do you leave stuff around like panties or earrings? Oh, my God. That is the greatest part. I knew it. I knew you were one of those. No, no. Here's what I like to do the most, though. See, they can always get an earring or a thong or they can, you know, do all that. But when you have a little perfume in there... They can't wash that out, and it just sits there, and then when the wife smell it, oh, it's great. Oh, my God, I love just leaving little things, just making little calls, just, oh, yeah. You realize you're not just getting back at your mom. You're also hurting these guys. Oh, no. The, you know what? Like, I believe that because of all the pain I felt when I was little, like, no one deserves to be happy. Like, I went through so much pain because I love my daddy so much and what my mother did to him with having these affairs in his face just made me hate everyone. I hate women, Tom. And this is how I get back at women. Really? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. It just, it hurts so much because... I'll bet you're great in bed too. You're the type... Oh, yeah. See, when you've been with older men, they've learned it all so they just teach it to you real good. Uh Uh-huh. And I just, oh, my God. Oh, it's so great. And I like, you know, like, I've been with Asian men. I've been with Jewish men. I've been with Italian men. But my favorite are the Greek men. Greek men? Mm-hmm. What do you like about Greek men? Well, like, the older, the bigger, the hairier, the better off they are, the richer. That's great. I really like them because, like, when they're in bed, they like to do it kind of dirty, you know? Uh-huh. Like, they kind of like you as a concubine. I like thinking I'm a concubine. Oh, really? And yeah, how about the ones with hairy backs? You like that? Well, see, the thing is, like, it's more daddiness. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. they're kind of, like, untaken care of because they're so devoted to being daddy, you know? Wow, wow, wow. My favorite thing is to call them daddy, and they like that a lot. They like being called daddy. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Listen the, only th- the only thing is, though, like, I generally, like, I've been with a few older Hispanic men. Uh-huh. But I don't like them as much. You don't like them as much? Why not? They're not good. They're, like, they're not into the family thing. Like, if I, if I know that they're at home and they're, they're trying to, like, keep it together, but I just lure them away, then that's good. But when they're just kind of out whoring around, I don't I don't like it as much. So you prefer a guy who has like a normal looking family and he looks like uh, he uh, just stepped off a leave it to beaver? Yeah, and like the kind of thing where they're a little distraught at a bar and it was only a one night thing, but I was so good in bed they just can't resist. Really? It makes me feel so good. And like I don't know, just, like, knowing that, like, I am arm candy for, like, some older man, just, like, and have everything taken care of. It's so comfortable. Are you a moaner or a screamer? Oh, no. Screaming all the way. Loud. Really? Especially if the neighbors can hear. Oh, even the, no, especially if the wife can hear. That's when it's the best. Really? Now, have you been caught? Oh, God, yes. That's my favorite part. I purposely make it so we get caught. Really? Yeah. And so uh, tell me about some of these confrontations. Well, the one that comes to mind is the first time I had an affair. And I was about 16 at the time. Uh And it was with an older gentleman. And um, he was really, really sweet. And I just, I didn't feel like he was committed to his wife enough. So... He was a surgeon, and his wife worked in his office, and I went over to his office one time, and we were doing it, and I made sure that um, he had an appointment with his wife, and she walked in on us in his office. Really? Oh, yeah. I was screaming, of course, and I kind of kept going when she came in, and it was really funny because he was trying to, you know, act like, oh, my God, my wife just walked in, and I was totally just all over it, and I just, I acted like it didn't bother me, and, um... Because it didn't. Oh, of course not. No, it made me happy. That's what I wanted to happen. Uh-huh. And so what did she say to you, the wife? Oh, she started screaming hysterically and throwing things, and um, it just, it made it so I could sue her. She um, threw a phone at me, and it broke my arm. So not only did I put her off, I got to sue her for a lot of money. Really? I was a mar at the time. We told, oh, my God, totally took that guy's cleaners. So, like, I just... I oh, you took him to the cleaners, too? Oh, yeah. I fixed myself up for college. Uh, we settled out of court. 
and I got to go to college. I got to travel the world. I got to I got two little French poodles. I got to do whatever I wanted. And then I turned 18, and I was kind of lonely. I had another affair until I was about 18. Uh-huh. And then it was with my teacher at school. Now, usually I like to go with men that have a lot of money, but this is just irresistible. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of classroom fun. and But I wasn't caught with that one. You weren't caught. You know, as hard as you tried, you didn't get caught. I tried. I did. I like, tried to, like, purposely show up at his house, you know, and things like that. And But I guess when you're in a university, it's more acceptable if a professor's having an affair. But I, I don't know. He never really I never got caught, and I was upset by that. So, like, whenever I'd go out to bars and I'd meet older men, I would always, my first question, are you married? And, of course, they say no, but you can always tell. You can tell because they look guilty? No, you can tell because they have that daddy look. Oh. Uh-huh. So do you take them at their word, or do you say, come on, you lie? What do you do? Oh, no. Then you, you get them into a false sense of security. You kind of go out with them a little bit, and you kind of let them pay for some stuff. And then and then all of a sudden you say, well, can I see your place? And they're, oh, no, 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 you can't. And it's, why are you married? Well, we're having a tough time now. And then it starts to come in like that. Uh Uh-huh. And then you start getting all moist, huh? Oh, my God. You don't know how much it turns me on to, like, see a dad holding a baby. Oh, my God. I just want to take that baby's daddy so bad. Really? Oh, yeah. Like, when my my girlfriend's out here, like, you know, I was going to beauty school for a while because I was kind of bored. Yeah. And it was something I always wanted to do. And a friend of mine, I met her father. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was classic. He was so cute. He was about 62. And I just could not get over myself. I was so in love with him. And I think it was just because I was friends with her, you know? Really? Uh-huh. Listen to you. I know. And I, I feel bad about it sometimes, Tom. I, I do. I, I, don't, I don't mean to upset people, but then what? It feels so good to know that I'm the one that's happy and they're all so miserable. It excites me. You're getting excited just telling me about it. I am, Tom. My heart is racing. And, like, if you were married right now, I would be so all over you. Really? Yeah. Could you just get married just so I could? You want me to get married so you can do me and then I get caught? Do you have, do you have like, a serious girlfriend? Well, I have, yes. Oh. Really? Yeah. That's kind of close. Hmm. Hang on. I don't know. Hang on a second here, Shirley. George, what do you want to say to Shirley? Dad, how in the hell are you doing? All right, son. These psycho women, where does Zeno find them? This, Shirley, you're crazy. You need to see a psychologist, woman. Are you married? Yes, I am. Oh, and what, yeah, what do you I look have, like? I have slept around from time to time, but crazy psycho women from trailer parks like you keep me from doing it. Do you have the big wang? Like, do you have a lot of money? <laughs> yes, I do. Where do you live? Huh? I live in Washington. Oh, my God. I'm I am an officer. To go to Washington I am an officer in the military. See, crazy women like you, y'all are stalkers. If are you in the military? Oh, if, my if God. It, if, it, if it were a guy doing what you're doing, he would be in jail. Are you in the military? Yes. If oh, my guy, God. That is so sexy. Do you want to know what I'm doing? Hell no, no. I'm a crazy type of woman like you. You call from Bellevue's Memo Institution or what? Oh, my God. You are so hot. I bet if you saw me, you'd just be all over it. How many kids have you got? <laughs> Tom, this woman is crazy. Now you see how she operates. <laughs> yeah, but it's not working. You know what? She was probably molested by her father when she was younger. No, I wasn't. Yeah. I wish I were, though. God, I bet you had a... <laughs> you wish you were molested by your father? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. This guy... No, no, Tom. Come on, you had a dream about that. You dreamed he diddled you. Come on. Actually, Tom. it was about my uncle, but that's totally your different. Uncle. She said it off the cuff. She said off the cuff. She yeah. was meaning it. She wants it to happen. She is crazy. Hey, Tom, blow me up, man. All right, here you go, George. 1-800-5800-TOM. Shirley, it's uh, amazing. You know, we um, what we really should do with you is get you down here. Oh, 
know you th would you like to meet me Charles? oh well no not for that reason dear i i think i would like to have you as a guest so you could talk to callers like uh well not necessarily like him but take call well as long as they're married and calling i'll think about it well hang on i'm gonna put you on with dino okay all right thanks all right dear there you go that is amazing